Warning, the following review of Transformers Robots in the Skies contains major spoilers. If you have not watched Transformers Prime or this episode yet, view at your own risk. Hello everyone, I'm Sonic, Sonic Geek San Diego, bringing you leads on video games, TV news, and more. So for today's review, we're going to be looking at Transformers Robots in the Sky Season 2, Episode 17, Mighty Big Trouble. Now, to me, I think this is a one of, uh, tie, probably tied with um, History Lessons for one of the best episodes of this fall event slash second half of Season 2. Um, we finally, finally get our look at first look at Starscream from Robots in the Skies, and it is awesome. There are some cons of this episode, though, that kind of hold it back from getting a perfect score. So we're going to go over ahead and see what this episode did right and what it did wrong. So this episode starts off with Bumblebee and the rest of the team heading back to the scrapyard after going to Egypt to get some sort of relic that the scavengers were after, which is, according to Fix It, like kind of like an, like an energy generator that's able to like, um, like it, it sends out kind of like a, like a, like a shockwave um, generator of some sort. Now this is actually a really nice nod to um, Back to Transformers Prime in which, um, in the epi season two episode Alpha Omega, Smokescreen and RC also had to go to Egypt to get him a uh, artifact. I think that was where um, Smokescreen got the face shifter. No, that was in um, New York with um, Bumblebee and RC. I, th I, I completely forget what sort of artifact Smokescreen and RC found in there, but they, they have been to Egypt before. So apparently, um, th when they bring it back, the generator starts uh, malfunctioning because um, Jetstorm and Slipstream are there and they trip on it, and so. Before it blows up and like kills everyone, Sideswipe's able to disarm it, and then we see um, Sideswipe um, start to like mock Jetstorm and Shipstream on their clumsiness, which um, they get kind of pissed off about. And we'll get we'll get more into that later though, as that's I feel is one of the cons of this episode. So after that, the most part, this episode actually kind of revolves around the Scavenger group, in which we've seen um, like Claw Trap and the rest of his game, such as Paralon, Scatter Spike, and Thermidor. So we see the f the four of them, I think. Yeah, Claw Trap. Scatter Spike, Thermidor, and Paralon. The four of them, as well as the, the all the um, what, the mini cons, which are who are currently on um, still on Cl um, Claw Trap and Thermidor's ship, they um, land on this um, abandoned human cargo ship, in which they um, they end up using it to look for um, various treasures in the dark in the sea. And one of the ones Claw Trap actually finds is the Dark Star Saber. Now, if you remember the Dark Star Saber is a sword made of pure dark energon that Megatron created back in Season 2 to counter the, the um, Optimus' regular Star Saber. And so, um, now Megatron last used this in the Transformers Prime finale, Deadlock, in which after Bumblebee killed Megatron with the Star Saber, he dropped the Dark Star Saber and landed somewhere on Earth. We, we had no idea where it landed. So, Clawtrap finds the Dark Star Saber, and he has no idea what it does. At th it's at this point that... Um, Arrow Bolts, Sawtooth, um, Buzz Strike, Tricera Shot, and the rest of the web, um, Minicons, Unaligned Minicons, decide to go ahead and make their escape in which they, they hijack their ship and leave. So, basically, um, Clawtrap and the rest of the Decepticons are obviously angered about this, and they try to shoot them down, but not before uh, another ground bridge opens and three Decepticons come out. Well, actually, two Decepticons, one Autobot. We See, finally, Starscream makes his grand appearance into Transformers Robots in the Skies in typical Starscream fashion, being such a show-off, and he's got two new De um, Decepticons and Autobots with him. He's got a Decepticon named Shadelock, who is this kind of like, looks like a blue Viacon with this cool, like, um, uh, I guess monocle, um, eye thing that this is this now, you know this is actually this guy is actually the um Decepticon that was spying on Grimlock and Thermidor back in the last episode Pretzel Logic so it's nice to see him and then he's also got a former Autobot named Rough Edge who is we can tell he actually has Autobot like scratched out Autobot symbols on his shoulders kind of like um what Steel John his group did with their Decepticon symbols so Starscream ends up showing on to the ship. He's he's apparently looking for, as I said he before in my theory videos for, for this series. Starscream is looking for the um for the, for the unaligned minicons that Claw Trap's gang was in charge of. And then once he notices that Claw Trap has the Dark Star Saber, he takes it from him and uses it to knock 
this Clawtrap and the rest of his um, Decepticon scavengers off the ship. So, obviously, Starscream is angered at the fact that they let the Minicons get away, so they intercept um, the, their ship's coordinates and decide to um, follow them in their own ship. And I gotta say, it is great to see Steve Bloom back as Starscream again after having seen him since Transformers Prime. Uh, we got that little little voice teaser back in um, the last episode of Pretzel Logic, but just to see like Steve Bloom, Starscream, because we've, we've seen Starscream in, throughout Transformers, the ser mutant series, as like this really cowardly, um, like, sniving guy, kind of, like, you kind of remind, like, as a high pitch, but, like, uh, there's something about Steve Bloom's Starscream that makes it such, him so much more menacing, and I'm really glad to have that back in Robots in the Skies. So, with Starscream and his, um, group in pursuit of the unaligned minicons, um, we, we cut to, um, Jetstorm and Slipstream, who are sparring in the scrapyard, uh, um, still angry at Sidesplit for picking on them, when all of a sudden, Sawtooth and the rest of the unaligned minicons invade the scrapyard, trying to, um, find the, um, their, the auto Bumblebee and his group's, um, energy generator that they re uncovered back in Egypt, but they have no idea that it's been blown up, so they're battling, um, Jetstorm and Slipstream, they get over, they, they're able to take them on pretty well at first, which I gotta say is I'm really glad that we get to see more, um, Jetstorm and Slipstream-centered episodes. We gotta see this in, um, Season 2 with the episode Graduation Exercises, and we even got to see it in, um, the Season 1 episode One of Our Minicons is Missing, but it's really good that we get to see how, just how capable Jetstorm and Slipstream are, since we really don't get to see a lot of them in the, um, in the series, um, and so eventually, um, Drift and the rest of the Autobots decide to go ahead and help them out, but of course, use, because the Unalive Minicons have the ability to take over any Autobots or Decepticon's body just by turning to a weapon in their hands, they end up basically ta they end up just wrecking them instantly, um, in which they're able to capture, um, possess all of the Autobots and incapacitate them, and then they're about to corner, um, Fix-It and Jetstorm and Slipstream, who are incapable of being possessed by them, but then fix -It informs them that the generator has been destroyed, and so, knowing this, they decide to go ahead and leave and just let the, the um, Autobots be, and so, uh, after this, um, we see Starscream and his group finally come over, just as, um, j j all those, um, Sawtooth, Aerobolt, and the rest of the Minicons leave. So, fix it, Jet Storm and Slipstream try to make a run for it, but are cut off by Starscream and his group, and they end up mistaking, Star um, Starscream ends up mistaking them for their own mini, um, not Starscream, Star, um, Rough Edge and Shadelock end up mistaking them for the unaligned Minicons. So they bring them back to Starscream, who is clearly annoyed at them for getting their own Minicons, and then fix it actually mentions, I know, this is a nice thing I'd like to mention, is that, well, we've seen that Robots in the Skies, for a lot of its returning characters, ha have um, different um, physical appearances, like Bumblebee and um, Ratchet being the most obvious ones, though we never see like um, any of the characters remark on their um, changes in their appearance. Now, we actually see um, fix it when fix it comes face to Starscream, we see him um, co um, comment on Starscream's new appearance, mentioning how his, uh, his current appearance is nothing like that with seeing the Alchemor, as, of course, before this, he was thought to have been killed by Darksteel, Skylinks, and Predaking at the end of Predacons Rising. So, of course, to them, Starstream looks would look like his Transformers Prime appearance. So, after this, um, Fixed lets Lu um, accidentally lets it out that um, Bumblebee is the um, Autobots leader. So, Starstream uses this to his advantage by contacting Bumblebee and the rest of the Autobots and telling them that he has Jetstorm, Slipstream, and Fixit, and that unless he hands him over, he's going to kill them. So Bumblebee, not wanting to have them get um, hurt or killed, he decides to give himself up, and Starstream opens up a ground bridge, allowing Bumblebee to turn himself in, basically. So this puts um, Strongarm into a really, really um, unsure leadership role, and just when she's about to get panicked, Optimus finally shows up, and that's when things start to get real. Now we're going to go on to the cons of this episode, which I really think the only big con was Sideswipe's relationship with Jetstorm, Slipstream, and Fix-It in this episode. So, now, if from what I've seen, remember, in Seasons 1 and 2 of Robots in the Skies, Sideswipe was very, like, he seemed to be very understanding towards Fix-It. While he did seem to be a bit condescending towards Fix-It in the Minicons back in Season 1, he really seemed to change back in season in the beginning of Season 2, in which he, um, helped, he even helped, um, uh, side, um Jetstorm and Slipstream out when... They thought it was their faults for Drift getting hurt back in graduation exercise, and that was like a whole bonding episode, I thought, with, um, 
Sideswipe and the mini cons, in which he act, um, they actually allowed Sideswipe to use them similar and like wear them on his wrist, similar to Drift did. Did and just as these Sideswipes sort of devolve into this like his this jerk again, it kind of reminds me back to um. Strongarm and Sideswipe's rivalry in the beginning of Season 2 when they were arguing Overloaded Part 1, and even, in a lesser extent, um, Grimlock's de-evolution in this, in this, in, um, Pretzel Logic, because Grimlock was already shown to be, um, capable of acting smarter and stuff like that, but they just dumbed his character, just like with Grimlock, they dumbed Sideswipe's character down just for the sake of letting him redevelop his character, which I think is kind of stupid, if you ask me. And so, that was my review of Transformers Robots in the Sky Season 2, Episode 17, Mighty Big Trouble. If I had to rate this episode, I would probably give it somewhere between an 8.5 and a 9 out of 10. It's great to see Starscream back. Um, the battle scene with Jetstorm and Slipstream against all the unaligned Minicons was awesome. Um, it, uh, it's always great to see Starscream again and more characters of Transformers Prime coming back. And But, of course, the, um, the rivalry between Sideswipe and the Minicons just didn't really seem like it belonged in the episode. This should have been something that should have been tackled, I guess, back in Season 1 or even early Season 2. So that's why this episode's score got hurt. So that'll be, that's going to be it for this review. I'll be back soon with Episode 18, Minicon Madness. If you like this review, be sure to be like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later.